Greetings, everybody. Um, this is Chaplain Bob Walker. Uh, this is an article that I saw. Uh, I've been doing a lot of research today. And, uh, you know, it's when you're doing research, it is getting more and more difficult to determine what is truth and what is lies. I mean, even the devil will tell the truth once in a while. Not very often, but, you know, you can't always tell lies 100% of the time. Eventually, you'll get caught, right? So, uh, the, uh, so it takes, sometimes it takes hours to do proper research on a topic in order to, you know, bring a 30-minute or one-hour Bible study on, you know, something relating to history. So, that being said, there is a guy, he lived in New Zealand, his name is Arnold Kennedy, and uh, he was a Bible student for many years, and he taught that Christians are Israel, the God's chosen people. And I wouldn't argue that with him. So he wrote an article. Uh, he since passed away, unfortunately. He's not around anymore. He was a prolific writer. Now, the uh, there's uh, his name. There's a guy named Hank. I think it's Rofels or something like that. He is from Australia. And he had a website called Christian Identity Ministries. And his website was taken down due to violations of, well, I don't know, for whatever reason, uh, you know, the uh, so-called chosen people have been buying up all the web hosting companies and are deleting information such as what I'm supposed to, I'm going to read to you shortly. And it's getting harder and harder to find quality content on the internet because they're getting rid of, they're censoring. So, with that being said, let's read what Arnold Kennedy had to write, uh, what he wrote in his article entitled, Unity in Diversity, or Which Jesus Should We Love? Now, when I uh, make a comment, I'll say Bob's note. All right, so here we go. And I quote, uh, The Lord Jesus Christ is revealed through Scripture as God the Father in eternity. Bob's note. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are one God, but they have different offices. Just like you're one person, you have a body, you have a soul, and you have a spirit. You're made up of three parts, but you're one. Uh, he doesn't evidently make that distinction, but that's okay. So, all right. The Lord Jesus Christ, is, as revealed through Scripture, is God the Father in eternity, manifested to man in time. Thus Jesus is the creator of all things, and the one to whom all things are to be made subject. He is the Lamb without spot who came to redeem his people. Bob note. Amen to that. Okay. Uh, let's continue with the article. Jesus is his name, and his title is The Christ, or The Anointed One. Many churchgoers are quite unaware that the Bible warns about another Christ and another gospel. Because of this ignorance, they talk about seeking unity with all sorts of other Christs. Unity is the present buzzword. Listed below are about 30 popular Christs, plural, Christ, different from the Lord Jesus Christ as revealed in the Bible. With so many false Christs, however could there be any universi uh, unity in diversity? Univer unity in diversity. Could tolerance possibly be practiced by those actively seeking truth? Tolerance is the enemy of truth. And when tolerance is sought, 
Truth is the first casualty. We must therefore be careful not to have fellowship with any form of a false Christ. And we must therefore watch out for false teachers who promote unity in diversity. Which Jesus should we love of these below? Of all the lists below, the last one on the list is the most dangerous because it is the least obvious. Number one, the Jesus who is not God, that is, the Lord God Almighty revealed in the flesh. Number two, the possibility, Jesus, of the Crystal Cathedral with Robert Schuller and Norman Vincent Peel. Bob's note. Norman Vincent Peel was the guy that uh, had the, uh, how would you say, the power of positive thinking type thing, you know, that is very, very close akin to the prosperity gospel, the name it and claim it people. So, you know, Robert Schuller and Norma Vince Appeal, that was their thing. So, all right, let's continue. Number three, the Mormon Jesus, who was a polygamist with many children after the flesh. Bob's note. Mormon Jesus is the brother of Satan. How would you like to have Satan's brother as your savior? I think I'll pass. Verse 4, I mean number 4, the modernist Jesus, who was not born of a virgin. Uh, Bob, note, the virgin birth was necessary because the Bible records that because Adam sinned that all flesh inherited the sin nature. That's why the virgin birth is a very, very important doctrine. Okay? Mary did not pass on her corrupt DNA to Christ. All right, let's continue. Number five, the Masonic Jesus, you know, the Jesus of the Masons, right? The Masonic Jesus, who denies what Jesus said about swear not at all, but instead demands terrible oaths. Bob, note, uh, the Mormons, when you, I'm sorry, not the Mormons, the Masons, uh, when the Masons have you swear to join their little club, uh, you, if you, you swear that if you reveal their secrets that you get your throat slit. Okay, you swear to that, right? But Jesus said to swear not at all. So, which is it? The Masonic Jesus denies the Jesus of the Bible. So, all right. Number six. The Unitarian Jesus, who is not God. Verse number seven. The Universalist Jesus, who will not allow anyone or of Israel or anyone else to go to hell. Bob, note, Jesus warned about hell. So, what can I tell you? Number eight, the prosperity Jesus, the one who came to make people wealthy in money and goods. Number nine, the laughing Jesus, who slays people with his spirit and causes them to laugh uncontrollably and stagger like drunken men, even if they are unrepentant and living in open sin. Number ten, the self-esteem Jesus. Self-esteem Jesus, who never condemned man as a sinner or who came merely to build up their self-image. Number 11, the revolutionary Jesus, who is the founder of the political liberation theology. Bob's note, political liberation theology is, uh, comes from the Vatican pretty much and involves helping the poor get involved in politics and civic projects. 
Uh, I don't remember Jesus saying for his followers to get involved with the Roman government during his day. Do you? I don't. So, all right, that's the end of uh, Bob's note. Verse 12. I mean, I'm sorry, not verse 12. Number 12. The Latin Jesus, who is one with voodoo and witchcraft and is always shown as a baby or as being still on a cross. Yeah. Verse, uh, I mean, I'm sorry. Number 13. The Hare Krishna Jesus. Bob's note. Hare Krishna is uh, one of the many millions or so Hindu gods of India. Um, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, Kali, uh, those are all Hindu gods. Probably de devils, demons, whatever you want to call them. So, all right. End of Bob's note. Number 13. The Hare Krishna Jesus, who can take the form of an image of Krishna to be prayed to. 14. The Muslim Jesus, who is an ordinary prophet amongst other prophets. 15. The Hindu World Church Ecumenical Jesus, who is one of the many ways to the Father. You know, they just, uh, Bob, no, they just, you know, Jesus is just one way of many. Take your pick. 16. The Jesus of one's own imagination, of those who live in a world of make-believe fantasy. 17. The feel-good Jesus, who can be psyched up in a meeting, but from whom all feelings are lost the next day. 18. The pop-up Jesus. Of those who say, Behold, he is here, behold, he is there, and who run about looking for spiritual experiences. 19. The revival show us miracles, Jesus. Of an evil generation, they seek a sign whose followers pray for everyone else but God's people to be revived. Verse 20. The promise keepers, Jesus, who believes that racial integration will solve the world's racial problems. Yep, just take everybody, uh, mix us all together, have whites marry blacks and whites marry Asians and Indians, American Indians and whatever, and just make us all one color and there won't be any more racism. Oh, that was Bob's note, by the way. So, all right. So, verse 20 was the promise keepers, Jesus, who believes that racial integration will solve the world's racial problems. 21. The homosexual Jesus, as he is portrayed by some modern writers. 22. The free, uh, free love Jesus, who is supposed to have had several wives. Verse 23. The stupid Jesus who thought he was God. 24. The broad-minded Jesus, who loves the sinner, but hates the sin. Bob's note, read Malachi chapter 1. 25. The tolerant Jesus, who tolerates the doctrine of Balaam and allows Jezebel into the church. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 14 and verse 20. 26. The lenient Jesus, who is not a bit like that in the letters to the seven churches in Revelation. 27. The New Age Christ, which is the Lord Maitreya. Maitreya. The God of the New Age, who calls himself Jesus or the Christ. 28. The March for Jesus Jesus, who marches with Roman Catholics, Mormons, cults, and any of the others above. 29. The wafer Jesus. You know, the cracker. I, I'm, well, Bob's note. Uh, the cracker. Uh, not necessarily a, a derogatory term for a white person, but, you know, uh, something made out of wheat. The way, uh, 29. The wafer Jesus, who is worshipped and crucified afresh in the blasphemy of the Roman Catholic Mass, 
who shows his presence by a, by a light in a box in the church. The Bible says, pray not for those who worship the queen of heaven. These belittle, belittle the Lord Jesus by saying that Mary is a mediator between God and man. Verse 30. The choose me, Jesus, who does not accept the words where Jesus said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Bob's note, Jesus told the disciples, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Verse 31. The every race Jesus, who does not accept the words of Christ when he said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Verse 32. I'm sorry, number 32. The popular church Jesus, who does not demand allegiance, commitment, or obedience to God's commandments, and one that does and one that does not understand that we will have to be dead with him. 2 Timothy 2, uh, verse 10 and 11. In order that they may obtain the salvation, salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Possibly the most important item of unbelief is that the true Jesus says, If you love me, keep my commandments. In doctrine, the popular, popular church campaigns against keeping the commandments of God. And he continues to write, can we indulge in compromise with false Christ, with another gospel, another spirit, and another Jesus? Uh, Bob's note. Personally, I would have um, had another, added another Jesus. Uh, the Yeshua, or I'm sorry, uh, or Yeshu, uh, the Christ of the, well, the word starts with a J and rhymes with news who say that he was a false prophet, the most evil anti-Semite that ever lived, and who is most certainly not the Christ or the Messiah, who was possessed of a devil and performed his miracles by the power of Satan. Uh, that would have been the other Jesus, if you ask me. So, All right, let's go back. End of Bob's note. Back to Arnold Kennedy. Can we indulge in compromise with false Christ, with another gospel, another spirit, and another Jesus? In 2 Corinthians uh, 11, verse 4, and 14 and 15, For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well, bear with him, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And for no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. And the answer is, to can we indulge in a compromise with false Christ or another gospel, another spirit, or another Jesus, is absolutely not. There are such false apostles. The Bible says the biblical proportions are hundreds of false prophets to one true prophet. The Corinthian church was careless and carnal and tolerant in an unscriptural sense, and Paul was afraid that if false teachers came to them and preached another Jesus, another spirit, or another gospel, they would put up with them instead of separating from them. Can we fellowship with those who follow any of the Christ above and expect our reward? 2 John 7-9 seven through 7-9 for many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. 
Whosoever transgresseth, transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. Obviously not. Each deceiver is an antichrist. All right, people, that is the end of the article by Arnold Kennedy. Uh, he's got a lot of really good articles. He, um, take a look. He knew about who Israel is, who the Christians are. He knows who the Antichrists are, the tares. And uh, he knew about racial separation and segregation. You know, there's a reason why God put uh, the Asians in Asia, the blacks in Africa, and, um, you know, the Indians, certain type tribes down, you know, down like in South America. If you want to know a Bible position on a certain subject, just take a look at what the world teaches. If the world teaches, uh, you know, we're all one, you know, we should all be mixed up because it doesn't matter if you're black or white, red or yellow. Um, all, you know, they say that uh, all are precious in his sight. You know, so if they're for racial integration, know that the Bible is against it and for separation and segregation. You know, there's a reason why God put certain races in certain parts of the world. And, you know, if, if the world and the churches are teaching that, well, you don't have to keep God's laws, it's a good idea to keep God's laws. Not for salvation, but for obedience. You know, if, you know, it's just whatever the world teaches, I'll guarantee you the Bible teaches the opposite. That's just the way it is. Well, stay close to Jesus, people. Things are just getting started. It's going to be really a rough, bumpy road. I mean, you know, the churches teach uh, every form of evil, you know, and I'm not saying I got it all figured out. I mean, you know, if Jesus didn't even know the day of his return, uh, you better believe there's a lot of things that I don't know. I mean, here it is, the creator of the heaven and earth didn't know what day he would return. He said only the Father knew. So, you know, do I have it all right? Pro I'm sure I don't. But uh, some things are pretty clear, people. You know, the Bible, Bible uh, start in Genesis 1-1 and end up in Revelation 22. Every time you read the Bible, you'll learn something new. Um, ask the Lord in prayer to give you his wisdom and understanding. He'll do it. So, all right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Jesus, the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.